Hi, welcome to my new video where I want to compare some of the most popular text-to-image models that you can run on your local machine. Can you remember the good old times when there was just Stable Diffusion 1.5? Well, AI image generation has become so much better since then, but on the other hand, it's also more difficult to choose the best model for your needs. In this video, I will try to give you some guidance. First, there are stable diffusion models for SDXL and 3.5. For SDXL, I'm not going to look at the base model, but on one of the top-of-the-line fine-tuned models, as well as to some of the more speedy LCM, Lightning, Hyper and Turbo models. As for 3.5, I will compare the medium, large and large turbo models. Then there is the Flux.1 family, where I will analyze the FP8 versions of the Schnell and the Dev models. And finally, we have a new kit on the block, which is called Omnigen. It has a totally different approach on creating and modifying images, which is very promising. I won't get deeper into this, but I'll leave a link down below if you want to know more about it. You should definitely check it out. Maybe it's the future of AI image generation. Well, who knows? Things are moving fast these days. Well, while I was creating this video, a new model came out, which is called SANA. It's made by NVIDIA, so it only runs on NVIDIA GPUs, and it's promised to be blazing fast, so I decided to add it to my list, even if it's just the first version and it's still work in progress. I'm going to evaluate all these models in terms of image quality, prompt adherence, speed and VRAM requirements, and wrap up the results in a detailed paper, which you can download for free on Gumroad, link down below. For a fair comparison, I've created 107 images for each model, divided into 12 categories and 11 challenges, so that's about 1400 images overall. For that purpose, I used the party prompt matrix by Google Research, which focuses precisely on different aspects of image contents, like artifacts, animals, people, indoor and outdoor scenes, as categories for various challenges, as you can see here. I'll leave a link to the paper. Okay, enough said, let's get into it. For creating the images, I've used a PC with an NVIDIA RTX 4090 GPU, 24 gigs of VRAM, and an AMD Ryzen 9 CPU with 64 gigs of RAM, so quite a powerful configuration, which was able to deal even with the most demanding tasks. However, most models will also perform quite well with a less powerful GPU, as long as it has a sufficient amount of VRAM. I will address this issue while I make my comparisons. I used the standard Comfy UI text to image workflow with the recommended settings for each model. For Omnigen and SANA, I used their own workflow. The image size is 1024 by 1024 pixels, except for Stable Diffusion 1.5, where I used the recommended size of 768 by 768. Each image has a label below with information about the prompt, challenge, category, model, size, steps, CFG, sampler and scheduler. I rated each image in terms of quality and prompt adherence as well as the average generation time and required VRAM for each model and then I calculated an overall score for each model. Of course it's not an exact approach but I think it can give you some guidance on how each model performs and if your GPU can even keep up with it. Okay, here are the models compared. I will leave download links to all of them down in the description in case you want to use them for yourself. I've created an overview sheet for each model that I've tested, which contains all images used for the different challenges and categories, and another sheet for each of the challenges, where you can compare the images made with each model in each category directly. These sheets can be downloaded for free from Gumroad together with my model ratings, link down below. Now let's start with our model ratings. First we have a SD 1.5 model called Juggernaut. As I said, nobody uses the base models for Stable Diffusion 1.5 or SDXL anymore, so I've chosen top tier fine-tuned models to make my comparison more realistic. The overall image quality is still ok at lower resolutions, but it has substantial problems with deformed hands, missing fingers and other things. It can't handle complex prompts very well and is incapable of rendering text or symbols. But it's very fast, with less than 3 seconds to render a 768 by 768 image on an RTX 4090 and it uses less than 4 gigs of VRAM. 
So it's a bit outdated, but still a fairly good model, especially when you are on a less capable machine. And there are all the nice stable diffusion extensions available to boost the capabilities of this model, like control nets, upscalers, IP adapters, animation controllers, and many, many more. Next we have Juggernaut XL, the fine-tuned SDXL version of the Juggernaut model. The image quality is substantially better than on the SD 1.5 model, but it still has the finger problems with people. The prompt adherence is good, though it still can't render text or symbols. It takes roughly 6 seconds to render an image with about 10 gigs of VRAM required, so it's a good model for a medium-sized machine. Like all SD 1.5 and SDXL models, it has a great variety of extensions available, like control nets, IP adapters, upscalers, animation controllers, and many more. I still like this model. Then we have a bunch of special SDXL models, which require far less steps and thus less time to render. Let's start with LCM. The image quality of the SDXL vanilla LCM model wasn't really convincing, though it seems to perform a bit better with less complex prompts. Still the same problems with text and symbols, but the speed is amazing, with only 1.8 seconds per image at 8 steps on my RTX 4090 and about 10 gigs of VRAM usage. So it's fast, but not really that good. You can run it on a medium to low powered machine, but due to its quality issues, I would rather use it for tests and previews and not in a production environment. Next there is SDXL Lightning and here I will use the Juggernaut Lightning 4-step model for comparison. It's a bit of a mixed experience. The image quality ranks from quite good to mediocre and although the image colors sometimes look a bit washed out, I think they don't look bad at all. Still the same problems with hands and fingers like in nearly all SD 1.5 and SDXL models. The prompt adherence varies, sometimes good, sometimes not so much, and also this model can't deal well with text and symbols. But it's very fast, only 1.2 seconds per image with 4 steps and about 10 gigs of VRAM, so it's worth taking a look on it. And although the results sometimes tend to be a bit unpredictable, you might still get something good out of it. Then we have SDXL Hyper with the 10 steps boltening realistic model, which, again, produces mixed results in terms of quality. When you take a closer look at the images, you can sometimes see some rather annoying blue light artifacts, not big but still noticeable. Prompt adherence varies and it's incapable of rendering text and symbols. It took me about 2.2 seconds for an image to render on my RTX 4090 with about 10 gigs of VRAM usage, so it's a very fast model, though I would rather prefer the lightning model, but that's just my own personal view. And there is SDXL Turbo with the TurboVision XL model, which produces images that again look a bit washed out, but not too bad after all. Prompt adherence is sometimes quite good, but not always. Text and symbols don't render correctly. It's very fast with only 1.8 seconds and 4 steps for creating an image, and it took me about 9.4 gigs of VRAM, so you could easily use it on a medium to low sized machine if you can live with its unpredictability but that's up to you to decide. Next we have the Flux.1 family by Black Forest Labs, starting with the Schnell model, which you can run with as little as 4 steps. Schnell means fast in German, so it ought to be a very fast model. Now let's see. I use the FP8 versions of the models, which uses less VRAM than the FP16 versions, as I couldn't detect a big difference in terms of quality. And it's all about quality. With Flux Schnell, the image quality tends to vary a lot, between very good and medium, but never really bad. It's doing well with more realistic images and people, and finally hands and fingers don't get messed up anymore, well, mostly. It's not so good with abstract things and art styles, but you could use some of the large number of LoRa's available to address that problem. The prompt adherence is very good, even with very complex prompts written in plain English, and it's finally a model that can mostly render text and symbols correctly. And it's still fast. It took me about 3.5 seconds to render an image with 4 steps on my RTX 4090. But there's a price to pay. It uses a lot of VRAM. I measured 19.5 gigs on average, so it's definitely not suitable for a low-end GPU. So what's my conclusion? I think it's a great and fast model for a powerful machine with much VRAM, 
but it will be difficult to run on a lower end machine. At this time there still aren't as many extensions available as for Stable Diffusion 1.5 or SDXL, but I hope that will change over time. There's an even more powerful model in the Flux family called Flux.1 Dev, and the image quality is really great, with all sorts of prompts, still some minor issues with art styles, but overall it's a really good model, and also the prompt adherence is very good. There are hardly any problems with complex prompts or with rendering text and symbols. So it's some sort of a game changer, but it comes with a price. It took me about 17 seconds on average to render an image at 25 steps, even on my very powerful RTX 4090. And it uses close to 20 gigs of VRAM, so it's definitely only suitable for a high-end GPU. So if you have a powerful machine and some patience, I would recommend that you take a closer look at this model. It's really top tier. Like with the Schnell model, there aren't really many extensions available at the time of this recording, but I expect that to change over time. For the sake of completeness, I want to mention that there's another model in the Flux family, which is even more powerful than Dev. It's called Flux Pro, but it's only available as a paid online service, so I won't cover it in this video. Now let's take a look at the new Stable Diffusion 3.5 family by Stability AI, starting with their medium model. Like Flux.1, these are base models, so maybe we can expect some fine-tuned models with even better quality over time, like with SD1.5 and SDXL. Well, let's wait and see. To be honest, I've been a bit disappointed by the image quality of this model. Still the same old problems with fingers and hands, and the overall impression wasn't as good as expected. The prompt adherence is a bit better as in older models, but it still has significant problems with rendering text and symbols. It takes about 5.2 seconds to render an image at 20 steps on an RTX 4090 and about 14 gigs of VRAM, so it's not really suitable for lower end machines. So in my view it doesn't bring much of an advantage compared with SDXL of Flux.1 Schnell. Hope there will be some better fine tuned models out soon. But there's also a 3.5 large model, so let's see how that one performs. Well, the image quality is medium, at best and I really expected more from such a large model. Fortunately, the problems with deformed hands and fingers has mostly disappeared, but the overall quality still isn't really convincing. On the other hand, the prompt adherence has become really good, even with complex prompts. Also, text and symbols are mostly rendered correctly, so it's an overall improvement compared to the medium model. It took me 12.3 seconds on average to render an image with 20 steps, so it's not super fast, but still okay. But the VRAM usage is immense. It used the whole 24 gigs of my RTX 4090. Maybe it can do with a bit less, but you definitely need a very powerful machine for this model. So what's my conclusion? It's a powerful model, but you also need a very powerful machine to run it. Given the rather medium quality, I would prefer Flux.1 Dev instead, at least for now, until better fine-tuned versions are available. There is also a turbo version of the Stable Diffusion 3.5 large model. Now how does this one perform? The image quality varies from medium to mediocre, so nothing outstanding. Fortunately it can render hands and fingers correctly most of the time. Prompt adherence is good, also text and symbols usually show up correctly. It's rendering pretty fast, because only a few steps are required. 3.5 seconds on an RTX 4090 is a good value for this large model. The VRM usage is still very high, I measured about 20 gigs, but still slightly better than the standard large model. So what's my conclusion? It's a fast model on a high-end machine and the image quality is surprisingly close to the non-turbo version. Maybe it can be an alternative to Flux for some use cases. The next model, Omnigen, is a bit of an outlier. Not in terms of quality, but in its general concept of image generation. But more about that later, let's first take a look at its quality. It's medium, at best, and it does have some flaws, like with rendering hands, fingers and other stuff. Also the prompt adherence isn't fantastic, and it seems to do better with shorter, less complex prompts. Text and symbols tend to show up correctly. Its performance isn't good. It took me about 42 seconds to render an image with 50 steps on my high-end machine. The VRM usage was about 15 gigs, so not too good either. So why use it at all? 
Well, it has a totally different approach on rendering, which is much more intuitive for the average user. You don't need to build complex workflows with control nets, IP adapters, in paintings and other stuff, but everything is built into its model and you can address it with natural language, just tell it what you want. If the image quality would improve over time, it could be a real game changer. But let's see if that happens. Finally, I want to take a look at SANA, the new text-to-image model published by NVIDIA. So obviously you need an NVIDIA GPU, at least for the moment. But let's see how it performs. The image quality is rather mediocre, but it's just the first version of the model and still work in progress. The prompt adherence is sometimes quite unpredictable, sometimes good, sometimes bad, and it also has problems with rendering text and symbols. It takes around 4.2 seconds to render an image with 40 steps on an RTX 4090, which is very fast, but it uses about 18 gigs of VRAM, so it's nothing for a low-end machine. So what makes it special? It can render images up to a size of 4096 by 4096 pixels, and that takes only a bit more than 5 seconds on an RTX 4090. That's unheard of any other model before. As I said, it's still work in progress, and I expect the image quality to improve over time. By the way, it's only supposed to run on Linux at this time, but I've made a short tutorial about how to install it on a Windows machine, just in case you're interested. Link down below. So what could be the best model for you? Well, it depends. If you have a high-end machine with a powerful GPU and lots of VRAM, I would recommend Flux.1 Dev, maybe also Stable Diffusion 3.5 Large Turbo. If you are on a machine with a medium-range GPU and still need good quality, you might choose Flux.1 Schnell or a fine-tuned SDXL model. If you want to get the best out of a lower-end machine, you could go with a fine-tuned Stable Diffusion 1.5 or an SDXL Turbo model. And if you want to try out something new, you might go for Omnigen or SANA. Please note that you need a powerful NVIDIA GPU for both of these models. But of course, that's only my own personal view. Make your own choice. I hope that this video could give you some guidance. So here are the links where you can download all these models. You can also find them down in the description of this video. And, as already mentioned, you can download the full rating sheet, as well as a sheet with all images and their descriptions, sorted by challenges and models for free on Gumroad, linked down below. Well, a lot of work has been put into this video, so I hope it can be helpful for you. And if it is, then give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for listening and I'll catch you in the next one.